Hey, what's up everybody? It's me, Danae, and I'm here with a message for you. Happy Friday. It is May 31st, 2024, the last day of May. Can you believe it? <laughs> kind of crazy. But yes, it's the last day of May. I hope you are feeling great, doing well, wherever you are, enjoying some lovely weather, as I am. And getting ready for a fun, fantastic weekend. it a few more times Let's see where this goes today one time for the one time <laughs> ah, I love it my favorite girl the nine of pentacles <laughs> Single, self-sufficient, and secure. Confident, accomplished. Yeah. Ladies night tonight, anybody? <laughs> There's some cause for celebration here, or a reunion, a get together, a gathering, a party, going out, hanging out. This could be somebody enjoying their single season or just enjoying their independence in general, whether you're single or not. You are so self-assured that it really couldn't matter. It, I mean, it really doesn't matter. In any event, you enjoy yourself. And that is spectacular. Whether you have a man at home or a woman at home or you don't, whether you're in a relationship or not, you enjoy every moment about the life that you're creating. I love that. <laughs> Really, the Eight of Swords and the King of Cups. Hmm. I don't know. You you enjoying your independence might not be such great news for some energies that may be observing. Your, your liberation and your freedom or your celebration seems like from a distance. Yeah, there there's some mixed emotions about it. it. Particularly if they feel like they can't be a part, if they can't join this party, then there may be some resentment here that somebody would almost want to lock you down or lock you up and throw away the key here with the Eight of Swords, but this is a secured state of being. Not much is penetrating this force field uninvited. So a King of Cups, that may have some ulterior motive to manipulate, control, or covet someone's independence. It could even be like, I'm seeing like projections of 
psychic attack or emotional manipulation to try to almost like infringe upon this party here, upon someone's contentment. And that's just not going to fly. No, that's just not going to fly in this season. Unless you allow it. Unless you allow it. All right, so let's see. I'm going to shuffle a little bit on that note. Yeah, there, there could be some intentions here to forge an attack on your achievements. Yeah, on, the, on your... On the expression of you and your and your calling and your purpose, on even perhaps even your decision to maintain a space of solitude or uh, seclusion, mm -hmm. devil energy to want to tempt you out of that safe space because you're just looking too comfortable too cozy <laughs> or they just want to be they want access to the comfort and coziness yes knight of cups want to finesse their way in yeah you just keep your sword up sis as you see fit and discern objectively what what gains entry to your your space if anything or anyone at this time you might be quite selective yeah this is new adventures even as you're open to new roads of adventure and exploration and new opportunities to socialize I would say even it's still nothing wrong with being selective in that regard because the streets are still watching <laughs> exactly and this could be the energy behind some of those new invitations or you know opportunities to explore that may look innocent but may come with some attachments that are less than favorable oh wow exactly talk about less than favorable that come with pressure, stress. Ulterior motives, baggage. Anything but fun. <laughs> yeah, that somebody would want to. This is a gift exchange, like somebody want, would want to gain access to your peace, your sanctuary to bring to offload their stress but package it like a good time like oh yeah we're just we're, I'm just here to have fun I got I got something to bring to the party you know, I got something to add. And this is the, what they got to add, you don't want in this regard. Somebody is immature and overstimulated. There, it's, it feels like somebody that's like highly aroused like on the prowl even kind of is what I'm getting, like highly aroused by 
your independence, your security, like seeing someone as great potential to partner with, but the passion behind it is perverted. Like there is some underlining motive for wanting to engage that passion. And it might be so quite self-serving on that end, but again, not reciprocal to what you would, would expect, what you would desire, or what you deserve in this case. And it could even be from like a, a place of immaturity, even if it's not the intention for malice. It just could be someone that hasn't quite evolved energetically, you know, they see something, they want it. There is no questions asked. They, you know, that there, there's really not a thought or much consideration for what they may be bringing to that fold because of the, the allure of this energy here. They may not even be aware of all that they bring to the fold that could be depreciating or depleting of the energy that this, this one has cultivated for herself. Like a kid in a candy shop. He, ooh, I don't know if you saw that. The King of Cups in reverse. Well, there's the answer on that from that earlier spread. Yeah, this is somebody that mm, is not all love. Somebody might be lustful, but they're not, it's not love. It's not love. And it could even be what they measure it, what they think it to be as love. But what it really feels like is somebody being like overwhelmed with lust, like passion that they don't know how to place properly. Maybe some intensity that they can't even understand or control based on the urge that it incites of them. So they may think that, oh, maybe this is love or maybe I'm just like head over heels for this person, but this is not given that. The King of Cups shouldn't be coming out in reverse in comparison to the Ace of Cups. This is the pureness of love here. So this is saying to me that someone either has no idea what love really is or their experience and or expression of it may be distorted or tainted. Again, they just see what something that they want and that's what's driving their passion. Damn near obsession, I would say, with the King of Cups in reverse. Like, shit, be careful. <laughs> As you out here partying and enjoying life, maybe gearing up for a fun-filled weekend, like, the energy is really good out here. Like, I feel great. So you may be exuding that expression of confidence, of creativity, of security. You know, it might be just oozing out of your pores when you're out and about thinking you're just having a girl's night or even having just a casual drink at the restaurant bar or whatever, or dinner by yourself, whatever it is you're doing. You're a spectacle. You're a sight for sore eyes. <laughs> Somebody is catching your vibe, seeing what, seeing you, or you know, somehow feeling allured by your energy. 
hell, you might not even think you're doing all that much on an, on any particular day. Maybe out on just some shorts and a t-shirt, hair pulled back and a ponytail, no makeup, just chilling. And that might be all somebody needs to see your light from the inside out. Something, Something's flowing here and somebody's flustered about it is what it feels like. And you seem to be kind of just like in your own world, minding your business, and again, just enjoying life naturally as you should be. But perhaps there is, as always, a caution to stay alert. And not just about who and what does approach you, but be considerate of who's watching without saying a word because that's what the king of cups is famous for having a whole lot of emotions bottled up inside but that they may or may not express this is the king of cups in reverse that's that's a little unhinged emotionally again obsession deranged imbalanced maybe even angry and mean yeah Cruel. Mm. Yeah, that's a whole nother spin. Somebody that has some disdain. Yeah, with the judgment, I'm going to take it. Somebody that may have some disdain for... That might actually be, like, mad about you living your best life out here in these streets. That sees you and wants to kind of... Like I said, like really kind of rain on your parade or on your party. Like, how dare you? Giving narcissist vibes for sure that either they want to find a way to benefit and be a part of or to destroy and dismantle. These are the energies right here to benefit and be a part of or to bring some type of dramatic ending. Meanwhile, you just in there minding your business. But the judgment card, as we know, yeah, somebody somebody's not balanced. And the judgment card, as always, speaks to there being a finality of such a cycle. Even as it may persist and be insistent from a perpetrator in this regard. Um, or some perpetuator of misfortune or or imbalance that there's an answer for every action with a reaction so before it even begins it'll be put to an end and all you really got to do is just again stay alert stay balanced but certainly not be in fear about doing what it is that you have the right and the privilege to do naturally nobody's living in fear anymore fortitude not fair faith not fair fun <laughs> not fair <laughs> it gets off the ground it's as soon as it'll be knocked down this is somebody's plan of action perhaps as I'm saying to cause some disruption or disturbance chaos stress in someone's otherwise unstressful existence or stressless existence Stress-free. <laughs> yeah. Stress-free. What's this? Ooh, the Ace of Cups again. Yeah. Somebody, it, it's like they somebody is provoked by 
the magnitude of self-love that is exhibited whether it's on a personal scale that you can relate to or generally speaking the discomfort of adverse energies that just don't like the idea of seeing people f foot loose and fancy free that they that misery loves company and that they don't want to see anybody thriving if they're not thriving if they're not having a good time vamping off of your energy why should you <laughs> why how dare you be abundantly fulfilled by your own energy by divine love and self-love self-care and unconditional affinity for life how dare you who do you think you are <laughs> that's ridiculous all right let's see Exactly. Who do you think you are, Queen of Cups? Who, who gave you permission to love yourself? And to not need any validation to do so? Who told you that was okay? Oh, the Most High, you say? Source? God? Your Supreme Self? <laughs> oh, okay. Wow. Queen, though. That... Is given high value woman on an astronomical scale at this point. I mean, as if it couldn't get any more um, sophisticated lady, more like, kind of. I mean that in the highest frequency with the Nine of Pentacles. Just somebody that's just got it together. You know, not needing for anything. This is not a damsel in distress. It's like you could be welcomed if you're on this frequency or you could go away. And I would be per it's somebody that's perfectly fine being by themselves and being with others with that three of cups. It's like somebody that thrives in either regard. And that's beautiful because... That shows a level of maturity as in the Queen of Cups and the Queen of Pentacles, knowing their, the value that they bring to any setting that they um, connect with. And also knowing the value of their own solitude, knowing when to kind of go back into self and to self-nourish and, and care and, and consider your own feelings and frequencies and and to, um, to, what's the word that I just heard? To prioritize that first and foremost before anything or anyone else. That's a narcissist's worst nightmare, <laughs> quite honestly. Somebody that isn't, isn't thriving unless it's on someone else's energy whether it be their happiness, their misery, their despair, their wealth, their abundance, hell, their poverty, whatever it is, the narcissist will just soak it up. And the sheer fact that it's one thing if you are unhappy and they can glean some resource from that, or you're needy, or you're codependent, and that's what it is, a lack of codependency here. That's really kryptonite for a narcissist or anyone that has narcissistic tendencies, okay? Let's say it like that because I don't want to diagnose anyone un unjustly, but you know the type that as long as you're unhappy with or without you, that's good for them. But to see you happy and happy without, that's a problem. That's a trigger. A major trigger. They'll exhaust all possibilities to try to figure out a way to get in your good graces just to, to abuse you, really. To defile 
your sacred space? Have you questioned in your own security, your worth, your value to flip the script, make you feel dependent on their presence before they either snatch it away or, you know, make you feel like you can't live without it, even in its worst form. You know, nobody wants to be with no king of cups in reverse. That's the worst. I don't, I don't even know if, if any of the other kings are worse than that. Cause it's like the king of pentacles in reverse. He might be broke or irresponsible with his finances or, or something like that. Maybe not, not quite secure and balanced. Okay. You can you can do something about that. The king of swords might be might be very callous. He may even be a liar. You know, um, he may be a bit you know a little insensitive or mean, perhaps. Okay, you can do something about that, even if it's just a matter of you distancing yourself from that energy because you can see a liar for what it is. You know, king of swords in reverse, like they're not even good at their lying. It's just, that's like a pathological liar. Then you got the king of wands in reverse. He's just an F boy. He's, he's a cheater. He's going to be trying to knock off everything moving. He can't be faithful. He's impulsive. He may even have a little bit of a temper problem, perhaps. You can deal with that, not to say you can stick with it, but you can see that for what it is and just say, all right, well, clearly this you're not you're not in this for commitment and devotion, and you can separate yourself from that. And nine, nine times out of ten, they'll get themselves caught up by their impulsive actions because uh, a, 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 a king of cups in reverse is probably not even good at cheating. and they probably get caught all the time. I mean, a king of wands in reverse. So eventually they'll get caught and at least you'll know what you're dealing with. But a king of cups in reverse, that's somebody that's very emotionally manipulative. So you may not even see, you may not even really um, sense what they're doing to you maliciously on the surface because that's somebody that could almost use love as a weapon you know like to make you feel crazy gaslight you and love bomb you to death until you really feel like maybe it's just you when whole time they're just mind fucking you you know obliterating your psyche pulling on all types of triggers and emotional traumas that lay dormant in your psyche and playing off of them. And, you know, it's just a real icky. And on top of that, they can flip-flop and be nice one minute, but be a total nightmare the next, and you won't even see it coming. You know, that's that energy is a little bit trickier and a little bit more, um, a bit more diabolical to be vulnerable to because of the level of damage it can do before you even realize it. You know, again, creating a codependency on something that is a falsehood, like presenting a, an ace of cups when that cup is completely dried up. There was never anything in there. If it was anything, it was poison from the gate. And you thinking it's love and you drinking it up. And before you know it, you're choking, you know? So that's a real nasty ass energy to be coming with any ambitious motivations to partner up or to infiltrate your space to impress, you know, to project any energy on you. That's somebody, like I said, that literally would find a way to like run into you or connect with you. And so like, like I said, you at a party, you at the bar and it's like, oh, hey, what are you doing here? Oh, what are you doing here? How, what, I didn't even know you were uh, in town or whatever. Like somebody that just happens to pop up where you are. What a coinky dink. You sit down thinking you're having a simple little catch-up conversation and whole time they just stabbing you with all types of, of underlying insults. 
that you don't even really pick up unless you're sharp, of course. And the Queen of Cups is sharp. She's she's on it intuitively, but you know, you may not even really pick up in your you know, happy-go-lucky, say you are, you have had a couple of drinks and your defenses are a bit down. You may not even pick that up that somebody's really trying to, like, jab you, you know, to to insult you. And then later on, you go home, sober up, or come to the next day, and it's like, what did he mean by that? That was rude. And they get your number and say, yeah, yeah, let, I'm going to call you. Let's definitely get together don't ever call or don't call for weeks or months and have you all in your head like, damn, I thought we was really vibing. I thought it was a, you know, there was some chemistry there the whole time. They just, they just want to, to poke, poke you in your, uh, in, in your self-esteem. That's all. Well, that came back out. I'll let it be. It was kind of janky, but I'll let it be. Why not? Because you're not going for it. You know, this is some, at, at the Queen of Pentacles, you're way too grounded emotionally and materially. First of all, you don't need for nothing. So there's a double down on that. <clears throat> Let's be clear. So you're not, you're not in any codependent state at this time to even really feel vulnerable to a necessity for partnership or commitment or connection. And you could be fine by on your own if need be. So someone can't necessarily get in through that way. Then as the Queen of Cups, you're quite grounded, emotionally intelligent, intuitive, um, self-care, self, self-esteemed and cared for. You prioritize your, your self-love as paramount so somebody can't really love bomb you more than what you already love bomb yourself except for your your love bombs don't hurt <laughs> you know it's like there's purpose behind the way that you affirm your own qualities and and value that you don't really need from anything on the outside or anyone <laughs> come on somebody what now you get to come out too. Come on, sis. Exactly. And anything that will want to try to impose a threat or turmoil, turmoil and ending to your courage, your self-esteem, your confidence, it's more to it than that. What is this? Because now... We got the Queen of Cups, the Queen of Pentacles, the Queen of Wands, and the Nine of Pentacles at the top, which is the pre-Empress, by the way. The only thing we missing to be the Empress at this point is the Queen of Swords, which is thoughts, communication. So it might be somebody that doesn't think, that thinks, may think less of your intelligence to some degree, or they're underestimating your intelligence, which is wild because clearly there's all this other energy on the board that would underestimate your intelligence to, to think that they could present themselves in a, in a disguise of a king of cups to love bomb, to flatter, to... Um, seduce, to allure, to patronize, I don't know, you, I don't, whatever, you know, however they feel they can get in, they feel like the, your senses of intelligence and or objectivity to dismiss someone on site or upon connection wouldn't be as well activated. But clearly they're very much mistaken because maybe perhaps once upon a time you were this energy in a more vulnerable state of being that appeared to be or maybe even perhaps was a bit of a damsel in distress type of energy. Maybe that's, the, that's what you projected energetically. Like you needed somebody. You You were 
too nice, too loving, um, not stable on your own, so you always needed some support, not a very high self-esteem or confidence, you know, maybe not even aware of how you facilitate all of these energies in the first place, but you just kind of live your life a certain type of way naturally that almost projected you to be naive or unassuming. This is also speaking to some transformation that has occurred by way of the judgment, you know, answer to a higher call, a higher being, that someone is clearly not not uh, keen to. Or they still just, again, this is narcissistic tendencies, where they still believe that they, they still are that much smarter or better or greater or advanced than you, that they can even where they think you've evolved, they could still meet you there and um, glamorize you one way or another, manipulate you at will. <laughs> like, okay, good luck, Chuck. <laughs> it's like a, it, <laughs> I swear I was about to say that it's like a dead on arrival situation, exactly. They don't even know how they're setting themselves up for sabotage. Because you step into a queen of wands on some BS, that is going to be an ego death. That's what that's going to be. To approach someone that is confident in who they are and to some degree, not all that conservative about her reactions and responses where it's justified you know so it's not like the conservatism say of the queen of pentacles or even the queen of swords because the queen of swords might be blunt and kind of straight to the point but she's also going to be quite thoughtful about what she says and how she responds. But the Queen of Wands is just going to tell you how it is and what it is. And not only that, it's the energy too that if you think you're going to finesse somebody as a reverse King of Cups to seduce them into some encounter, your ego will be bruised when, as the Queen of Wands is here, she's not even looking at you. There's no engagement whatsoever. She's not entertained. She's not enticed. Her attention is, is monopolized elsewhere or averted elsewhere. And that's a blow to the ego in itself because the, the Queen of Wands as one of the most attractive queens, like for whatever it is someone could think about you, they can't deny your attraction. They can't deny your love. They can't deny your value. They can't deny your independence. It's undeniable. It's evident. So even as they may try to challenge your intelligence or even <clears throat> um, demean your intelligence, like insult, there it is, insult your intelligence, the rest of you is still, you know, that 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 more or less is a delusion or maybe even a confusion of sorts that somebody is just unaware or ignorant. But what else is real about you and true about you is what is most alluring and and um, arousing. So for someone to feel like they either want to be a part or destroy it and they can't do either that's devastating to say the least but they kind of brought it exactly they brought it on themselves because somebody is ignorant they are not enlightened to the sheer i first of all it's like the idea that someone could change and has changed or it tra transformed and evolved or just the fact that they might just not be interested in them or their antics you know it's just like but here we go again narcissistic tendencies like how can you not be how could you not be into me 
they don't even really see themselves for who they are. Because they're blinded by their own perverted passions and ambitions. Temperance card here. Heaven and Earth is on the case at this point. Mm -mm. Somebody is too secure. <laughs> yeah, somebody is too confused. This is illusion and delusion. They, they, they are not even able to. That's what I was saying. Like somebody's not even able to fathom transformation or transcendence at this magnitude they don't even think that that's possible for someone to be so secure and so mature and so controlled in their passions and so still so loving and and compassionate but yet still be quite you know courageous and confident even bold and how they express themselves. Like how could someone be all of that and I don't even know. Like how could someone be all of that? Especially if this is a is if this is a case as I started to say before where this is an um a, re a reconciliation or reconnection of sorts where somebody knew you as one thing before or they just have a perception of you maybe even from the outside as I said like the outside looking in you look very unassuming uh, naive docile perhaps maybe a little bit needy I don't know what the perception that you give might be from the outside or like I said just somebody just so enticed by your energy that they don't care what it is you think you are or actually are they gotta have it you know so they're they don't see through the fog of their own delusions to see themselves clearly enough to know that if you're not on this frequency of temperance of self-control of of you know a pure passion of um an intention for harmony and balance, then you're going to be blocked. You're not even going to get through. You're not going to be able to penetrate this force field. This is the type of energy that surrounds you, by the way, if you can relate to these queens. <laughs> yes, queen. <laughs> that might be the title. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> That might be the title. <laughs> oh my God. Like somebody just can't believe it. They they either can't believe that this is unattainable for them or out of reach or that their tactics are not effective. Somebody may think that they are Don Juan with it. You know, like I said, this was first the King of Cups in the upright. But I felt the energy that it wasn't that, you know, it was like, you know, a front. So this is somebody that knows how to lay it on when they lay it on. And they have a success rate of results in response to their seduction. So the fact that somehow it's not working for them doesn't make any sense. But it's it's more so the object of the affection, or in this case, the obsession, that it doesn't work for because somebody operating in this frequency is just not that easily seduced. Not without it being pure, again, ace of wands, real love energy. Now that's seductive. Somebody coming to you honestly, openly, um, maturely, without ulterior motive in a in a poor you know in a mal intention of course um that's emotionally available open to intimacy excited to connect excited to learn just as much about you as they want to share themselves with you 
that's a different frequency of seduction. That will get you to drop the draws every time. <laughs> if you're anything like me. Hell, let's keep it real. We dropped our draws for less. When I'm talking about Ace of Cups, love of a lifetime, divine love energy, it would be hard to keep them on when it's real. But this is like, you can see that a mile away. You're not aroused. You're not turned on. You're not intrigued. You're not interested. You're not entertained. It's like, and somebody just can't take it. They're sick about it. Because they had a plan. And it was foolproof. Exactly. They're sick about it. They feel entitled to a response, a reaction, in some way, shape, or form. This is somebody that would resort to negative attention if they can't get it positively. Like I said, they'll take it any way they can get it. That agitate you, irritate you, you know, lie on you, perhaps. This would be that energy, you know, to literally sabotage. If they can't get it, then they'll lie and say they did and tell everybody how terrible it was or how, you know, how it is bullshit. <laughs> That's what it is. To try to disrupt your peace from the outside and if they can't disrupt it from the inside that's that's the less exactly what i was saying about the king of cups in reverse just mean cruel and the audacity to think that they would be entitled to anything benevolent is wild because they think this is who they are. They think they're the king of pentacles. They, they could be somebody that even has a great deal of wealth or resources or affluence. You know, they think they a high value man too. So, you know, that manosphere energy, some of it is quite toxic. That's what this is. Toxic masculinity here at its worst. They have all the resource and all the facility to believe that they are high value, but none of the spiritual affluence, none of it, literally cup poured out <laughs> on empty because they think that their cup, what they have to offer is even greater than the divine. That's, that's this energy here. Like what? This is nuts. One more. Well, that's being laid to rest, as I said. And that's like the warning shot before the ultimate demise with the Ten of Swords. So somebody feeling laid, laid down and laid out, they ain't seen nothing yet if they continue on with this ambition. They feel like they, their ego was bruised with this Four of Swords, that they had to lay down on the truth of who they really are, how toxic they are with the Three of Swords up, up ahead, up top. That is, it's somebody that like idolizes toxicity like a trophy on the wall, like trophies on the wall. That's the Three of Swords up here. This is the Ace of Swords down here. They sleep to the truth, but toxicity, trauma, oh, they love it. They love it. They thrive on it. But this is somebody that's having to kind of fall on their own sword. Grace, best be graciously. Otherwise, the advancement of that sabotage by their own hand will enhance by, what's that? Six? Six of swords? Yeah, they'll just have to move on. In this case seemingly a bit shamefully I would say it would probably be a reverse from moving over yeah I think that card came up too the six of swords a moving of moving forward um and peaceful and comp to peaceful calmer waters you know like to change your mentality shift your way of thinking this would be somebody that either would be forced to do that by their dismissal or they may just regress to be worse 
in my state to be worse. Which would be, you know, it would still come out to a six. I was trying to see something. If you add it, it would still be a six. So either way, somebody is facing inevitable change that they need to make. So, um, do I want to? Do I want one more? I'm gonna get one here and one here. I just like the formation that, that I got going on today. You may not even be able to see it over there, but let's see. <laughs> Full card. Yep. Either new beginnings or you are gonna look like a damn fool. Again, trying to finesse the uh, situation with the Knight of Cups. It's time to seduce yourself is is the thing it's time to to really take a sip of that cup you trying to offer everyone else and see if you like how it tastes and react and respond accordingly maybe get a getting a taste of their own medicine is what that means yeah mm -hmm. something like that that makes sense all right one more and they don't like it. But it's not the same medicine. It's it's a good medicine in this case, but they it just has a bitter taste. Because this isn't somebody that's responding in the same regard of being manipulative or cruel or um, any of those, you know, toxic traits that we that I talked about. This is just somebody responding, being their authentic self. And that mirror is quite provocative for someone with narcissistic traits because they don't really want to see themselves for who they are. To be faced with someone, you know, narcissistic energies usually feel like some people can be corrupted in some way, shape or form because they can be. And generally speaking, as humans, we usually can because our psyches, our emotional essence is so fragile at times that it, it usually is corruptible. But to encounter, so that's what it is, the, the disbelief that somebody is that self-secured, that there's really not much of an angle that can be penetrated to bring them down to size to then be vulnerable to more attack. That's what somebody can't really get over. And it's provoking their ego to want to find another way to do so. But that's where the dead end comes in. Because it's only going to bring somebody to their wits end ultimately to, like I said, either have to fall on their sword, get murked, <laughs> or to start over again. Ooh, well, I'm gonna take that as it was. Sort of truth. And it came out in a bit of a twirl but it's kind of hard for me to really take the Ace of Swords in anything less than upright unless the message calls for it. Like I said, this is, over here is just confirmation. Like the truth of the matter is, even in the reverse, it's like somebody's either going to fall victim to their falsehoods and their lies and illusions that they perpetuate or create for themselves or they're going to answer to the truth and reformulate a plan that is activated in that essence that's that's all it comes down to and also confirmation of all that i just said and we will take it spirit thank you kindly so moving on oh, confirmation they either gonna answer to the call of their authentic truth 
or they're gonna have to fall on their own sword. Wow. Yeah, that's the only way to prosperity at this point. That's the only way. Whether this be masculine or feminine, of course, that's the only entry point, point and key to this eternal prosperity, whether this be energetically, materially, in health and wealth, in partnerships and creativity, in time even. I don't often say time enough with pentacles, but this is somebody that could be shaving years off of their life with these perverted ambitions and passions and they're not even recognizing it because they're too fixated on um, immediate gratification, but there's more of life to live beyond this moment that we're securing in this moment though. So this, this is the most desirable outcome for the most part that anybody could ask for just wealth of abundance and generational wealth at that energy that you would want to be able to pass down whether it's material or otherwise beyond your lifespan to your children and your children's children and if somebody doesn't shift their way of being they won't have much of value to pass down to their legacy. They won't have much of a legacy at all to leave behind. Remember, the death card did come out. People will only remember them for their treachery and the turmoil that they caused. But as long as there's breath in the body, there's an opportunity to turn that around in the highest frequency if someone, if anyone, is willing to accept that invitation, that opportunity, that privilege. So, yeah, and there's plenty of it to go around. That's the thing. That's what somebody also needs to change their mind about is that there really is no deficiency of abundance here in this realm. That's an illusion. So if people would really get that through their skull, there is no competition amongst gifts, amongst talents, amongst power, amongst amongst privilege. Everybody has their designated lot and has act, literally the judgment card and has access to expand and magnify that beyond even what you can perceive to be yours. So if that's true for everyone, and it is, but everyone can perceive of that truth, then the conception of creativity without without limitation is more um is more prevalent is more relevant is more prevalent across the board because no one is a threat to anyone when you're out of that scarcity mindset that limited mindset to think that somehow what somebody else has might be a threat to you or that you should have what they have or you don't have enough or you're not enough and all of that is the illusion that we need to really that needs to be the death of it all so that rebirth can happen individually and collectively to really acquire and actualize this wealth and inheritance of abundant life that we're all privy to. Everyone is is privy to that resource. So it just happens through truth. Truth is the key that unlocks that reward, the vault to that reward. So somebody gonna fuck around and find out one way or the other. <laughs> for the best or for the worst, it's inevitable at this point. So whatever it may be, Godspeed to all that can relate or not, or to whatever frequency you relate on, hopefully. Yes, queen, to that frequency. <laughs> whether you're masculine or feminine to the 
exuberance of fertility in every characteristic that has been expressed here, even by way of intelligence, since we got the Ace of Swords. That means that if you never thought you were the smartest tool in the toolbox, you have access to intelligence, intel, enlightenment that supersedes, it transcends all earthbound knowledge. You know, this is the secrets of the universe that you may even have access to. So who cares if you're book smart or if you got a college degree or a master's or whatever the hell, like none of that even matters in the earth realm, really and truly. It may add value to your personal esteem and that's great. I got a degree too and it's wonderful, but guess what? I'm not even really doing what I went to school to study for, really. This is what I'm doing. Knowledge from a higher realm, from a spiritual expression and transmission. And you don't really need to go to school for that. So whatever magic or whatever quality, essence, value that you have working for you, keep doing that. Keep doing that, keep cultivating it, keep growing it, and keep on believing and expressing it boldly. Because whatever it is, you're doing something right with it, for sure. To cause what they what, what Beyonce say, something about causing all this conversation. I forget that word and uh, that line and... Um, uh, formation. Isn't it formation? I must be that caused all this conversation. Something like that. I don't know. Y'all know it though. I know y'all know it. <laughs> it's, it's yes, queen. Yeah, there it is. Queen B vibes up in here. And that's not exclusive to the queen herself. Anybody can get in on this just by exuding that, that supreme essence of you that comes from that ace of Cup, cups frequency that not only do you have access to but you embody it naturally it's actually quite unnatural to resist it that's the gotcha gotcha but anyway thank you for listening and watching happy friday again enjoy your weekend if you are out enjoying yourself definitely do so emphasis on the enjoying of yourself but be alert, be aware, be safe and sound, and be discerning as you already are, all right? So thanks again. Until next time, as always, I leave you with peace.